Now it is time to do the news. Yeah, now as we know, uh, to try and shore up the car industry, the government recently announced that if you scrap your old Singer Gazelle, uh, you get £2,000 off the price of a new car. But why is it just cars? Well, what are you suggesting? Dear the government, I've just found some rancid bacon in the back of my fridge. <laughs> Can I have a big pile of money to buy a shiny new lobster? What about, would it work for dogs? Because you know when, like, your dogs, dogs get a bit old and incontinent and you have to... Well, you, Peter Mandelson's going to come round and put your dog to sleep. Oh. He's not going to put it to sleep, he's going to kill it. <laughs> Technically, yeah, that's what it, yeah. Are there any vets here? Because, you know, you are a vet. A vet student. Well, be very careful, because I found out the other day vets have one of the highest suicide rates in the world. <laughs> and I know why. It's because when you have children who love animals, they always say, I want to be a vet when I grow older, OK? Yeah. And then they discover when they become a vet, all they do is drive around the countryside all day long executing puppies. <laughs> That's all you'll do. So, in fact, according to that theory, the only people who should be allowed to be vets are children who hate animals. Yes. Do you like go. animals? Oh, You're going to spend your life just... Yeah. Hey, little girl. <laughs> what a lovely little, little puppy. Yeah. There it is. Have you, you chosen your weapon yet? What are you going to use? <laughs> I'd have two in, like, a holster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or a croquet mallet for somebody's tortoise that's not well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Gonna no, to we're going to put her off. You Sorry. work hard and become a vet. Just don't kill yourself. Go for the cut. <laughs> I thought vets had the highest suicide rate in the world because they're the only people who are still allowed to have pistols. What's pistols got to do with it? Well, because it, it's easier. Than I, what? Well, I've only got a shotgun and it's, it's quite long. You know, you've got to tell me. <laughs> if you had a pistol, you'd have shot yourself by now. Oh, years ago. <laughs> now, pay attention, OK? As men, we all know that you should never, ever buy a woman something with a plug on it. Yeah? So we know that. Yeah, OK. I did. What? I did. You bought your girlfriend an electrical appliance? Yeah, I got her a power drill. James! <laughs> James, she's a ballet correspondent. Well, that's what, what you... she wanted. She said, I want a power drill. So no, I she said that, James. Well, do you know nothing? Women say they want a power drill, but they don't. They want soap. No, women <laughs> always... They do. Yeah, but it's impossible to buy soap for a woman. Hey, no, hang on. Soap, soap. You can't... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, girls? Soap is soap. Well, it is. It's Go just... on, then. Buy your wife some Swarfiga. Well, that's good. Cool. <laughs> that's an effective cleaning agent. She'd be chuffed, I'm sure. Uh, now, you know I've been saying for years and years and years that Porsches are getting uglier and uglier. Cayman, KN, Coxter, and that thing you were driving the other day, the Panamera. Panamera, yeah. I mean... I've, I've worked out why they're now so ugly, OK? I've got a photograph here of the managing director of Lamborghini. What do you think of him? He looks like a male model. Look at him. He's absolutely magnificent to behold. <laughs> Got a photograph also of the managing director of Ferrari. Uh, more than that, she runs Fiat. Look at that. Dashing. Dashing and glamorous. I've also got a photograph of the man who runs Porsche. Here he is. <laughs> and if he likes that moustache, which he does, because he's grown it on his own face, <laughs> that would explain why he looked at the Panamera and went, yes. That's a good-looking car. We should make that. Can we now do the news? <laughs> yes, Because last yes. week we were talking about the government's scrappage scheme, which is important, and we got sort of distracted oh. by talking about playing croquet with tortoises instead. Dead tortoises. Anyway, we mustn't do that again, no. because it is, the scrappage scheme genuinely is important, OK? Because what's happening is, is to prop up the car industry, uh, the government is really encouraging you to scrap your old car and buy a new one. The trouble is that the cars people are buying are Korean, which means the government is using our money to help Kim Jong-il buy nuclear weapons. <laughs> That's the wrong bit of career. Oh, don't be so pedantic. Well, it's not... It's hardly not. pedantic, Jeremy. One is a free market economy making a harmless hatchback, and the other is a totalitarian regime allegedly making weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> when a nuclear bomb drops on your house, don't come crying to me about your important distinctions. Why would, why would the South Koreans nuke Hammersmith? They use American guidance systems? No, no, we're going off topic again. Can we get back? Oh, yes. Can we get back yes. to the scrappy scheme? Yes. Because, uh, now, this is an important point. It is more ecological, and this is a fact. The Green Party agree with us mm. on this, only on this point, but they agree with us on this point, that it's more ecological to keep an old car going than it is to scrap it, throw it away, and build a new one. Well, that is a true fact. And the other thing as well is, if you've got an old car, OK, we really are on topic here, if you've got an old car, it has to be serviced by someone, and that someone is going to be an under an arch at the end of your road, yeah. and not Kim Jong-il. <laughs>
Goodwood Festival of Speed last weekend. As I'm sure you know, this is a celebration of all the great cars, all the brilliant cars we've seen over the years. Renault turned up with this. What? Wow. <laughs> I kid you not, OK? Now, look what it says here on the picture they sent us. The Renault Zeddy, that stands for zero emissions. Renault Zeddy concept wows Goodwood Festival of Speed. Wrong word. It should be ruins. <laughs> what are they talking about? I don't, how many children said, Dad, can we please go to the Goodwood Festival of Speed because I really want to see a zero emission Renault van? Yes, how many of those kids went back to school the next day? Did you see the chrome-plated Bugatti? No, but I saw a Renault van with green windows. <laughs> yeah. Hey, now, no, people, people, can I just get serious for a moment? Would you mind? It's just that we've heard that over in Amsterdam at night, various drunken louts, there's no other word for them, have been picking up, you know, the little smart cars and throwing them into the canal. We've got a picture here. <laughs> Seriously. It's no, no, I, no, 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 really. I mean, it apparently only takes four people to pick one of those things up and just lob it in the drink. <laughs> now, I bring this up because I'm just slightly worried that over here in England, people might start picking up those little electric G whizzers <laughs> and throwing them in the river. <laughs> Can you imagine how awful that would be for Mr. Weirdbeard if his pride and joy were to find itself one morning in the Thames? Yeah. I really cannot urge you enough not to do that. <laughs> Thinking about it, if you did lob an electric car into a river, wouldn't it kill all the fish <laughs> and it all float? Well, electric? Would it? Yeah. Would it do that? Yeah, Are would. there any electricians here? <laughs> would it electrocute? The... Why aren't you at work? <laughs> <laughs> would it electrocute the fish? Why? The, the voltage is too low and the amps... So it turns out it's fine to throw a G-Wiz <laughs> into a canal. <laughs> Can't advise that. That's OK. I'm not convinced by that, though, because I think electricity is a mystery. <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, I don't actually believe in it. You don't believe in electricity? No, nobody really <laughs> understands it. What you are witnessing here is Asperger's made real. <laughs> Is that what makes my wee smell funny? No! <laughs> oh, no that's asparagus. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, it's £138,000, which is £10,000 less than the regular car, yeah. but that's because this is rear-wheel drive. The others, of course, are all four-wheel drive. But what I really like about it is that stripe. This one? Yes. Yeah. You know it goes over the seats as well? Does it? Yes. Yeah, it goes so over the roof and over the seats. I like that stripe so much, I'd be prepared to buy the whole car just to get it. Just for the stripe. It's a <laughs> just, can I just offer one word of warning to anyone who's thinking of buying a Gallardo? James, for you, OK? Have you seen this? That's, oh. that's a burning Gallardo. Yeah, have you seen this? That's a burning Gallardo. Yeah, no, have you seen this? That's a burning Gallardo. I oh, know, but have you seen this? That's a burning Gallardo. What about this? Uh, burning Gallardo. What about this? That'll be a burning Gallardo. All right. That's ridiculous. So I go into the dealer and I say, I'd like a Lamborghini. Could I have one that's not on fire? <laughs> The thing is, though, I have to say, this is what makes driving a Lamborghini so exciting. So you drive a normal car, and it's not on fire. <laughs> now, we have some bad news. Dacia Sandero. No, not the Dacia Sandero. <laughs> Worse news, the Peel P50 is no longer the smallest car in the world. Oh, no! Mm. How will that affect us all in any way <laughs> at all? Because you know those little um, kiddie cars that do that at motorway service stations if you put 10p in them? A man has taken one of those, put an engine in it, and created this. Wow. <laughs> I'm presuming you mean the one on the right, not yeah. the Honda. Not the not Honda. Not the CRV, no. Now, <laughs> the only problem is he hasn't really left enough space in it for him. He's trapped himself <laughs> up to the <laughs> It must be quite scary driving along, only knowing where you are by things that have just gone past. <laughs> slightly to the side. I heard just... that. I can't even bother to look. <laughs> to get... we I can't even bother to look. We didn't say anything about Richard Hammond's <laughs> ideal car. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Who somebody said back that? there has. Big fella here with a tattoo. Yeah. Now, <laughs> on a sort of serious motoring note, it is rumour, this is business, uh, that VW might buy Porsche, then that bodes well, because VW can make a good-looking car, good-looking sports car. Yes, in fact, can. remarkably, there's one in the studio. <laughs> it's over there. It's the uh, the VW Blue Sport. Now that's mid-engined. It's got a two-liter diesel engine in it to start with. They'll put some petrol in later. Yeah, yeah. there's a sixty percent chance they'll make it. And if that happens, it'll be in about two years. It's worth having a look at. And the, the great thing about that is, you look at it, you go, it's not very practical. It's got a diesel engine. You know, all of those things. But it's incredibly beautiful. Yeah. And as a result, I would like to buy one. The worst thing that you would ever have to buy, ever have to buy a girl, is a handbag. That's pretty because bad. even if by some miracle you got the right colour, it would be the wrong shape, it wouldn't have the right number of pockets, it would be last season's handbag. Is there a season for handbags? <laughs> Did you hear? Is... Oh, yes. What, at certain times of the year I can shoot handbags? Yeah. It's OK. <laughs> no, the fact is, OK, my wife has a handbag. I kid you not, it is this big, OK? And in it she'll go, I've lost my mobile phone! Ring it! <laughs> If it's in there, you must be able to see it. I can't see it. The point is, salvation is at hand, OK? New type of handbag out this week. Here it is. Look at that. Yeah, now that is made from Camaro seats. What? Yeah. And it says in the bump, and I'm going to quote, OK? Try to picture your lady friend grasping it tightly at the next vintage car show you both attend. Oh. <laughs> So this is made from the seat cloth of a classic Camaro. Yes. So that's had a Texan's sweaty buttocks on it for 30 years. <laughs> yes. And now it's a handbag. On the other side, you can't actually see it, are the skid marks. No, no! <laughs> oh, guys, 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 I want to show you this, OK? It's a speeding ticket, which was issued in California, OK? Uh, we see here that the car in question is a Bugatti two-door. I'm guessing a Veyron, OK? <laughs> Speed limit on the road, 65 miles an hour. Recorded speed, 210. If he'd done that in this country, you'd be put in prison for 2,000 years. I know. Do you want to know what the fine in California is for doing 210 miles an hour on a road with a 65 mile an hour speed yes. limit? You get, basically, the maximum fine a judge can impose is $500 for 210 miles an hour. That's the max. And if you do it again, it's just $750. <laughs> Say goodbye, we're off. Yeah, that's it. Yes. <laughs> Do we, why well, is are we there doing what we do? I know. Why do we make Top Gear here? This is the worst country in the world for making a car program. Honestly, I think we should go, I really do, because that is civilised behaviour. <laughs>
the news, and the big news this week is a new Ferrari. Here it is. It's the F430 Scuderia Convertible. Hmm. And if you are one of the 499 people who have ordered one of those, all we have to say to you is, you big daft cock. <laughs> Big mistake. Error. That was a massive mistake because while you were doing that, Ferrari were working on this. This is the replacement for the yeah. Ferrari. Oh, well, yes, exactly. Yeah. That's the 458 Italia. And I have to say, from the front, it looks absolutely exquisite. But from the back, it looks even exquisiter. How do you feel now? How do you yeah. feel now? No, it's just beautiful. And what's more, this is fantastic to drive. How can you possibly know that? Nobody's driven it yet. So because, aha, uh -huh, history teaches us this. Because every single time the Ferrari Formula One team is doing well, their road cars are rubbish. And every time their Formula One car is doing very badly, their road cars are brilliant. And this year, you see what I'm saying? They can't win anything, even an egg and spoon race. <laughs> He's absolutely right. And the problem is, if you've only got 100 people working for you, and 50 of them are completely bogged down designing you know, a windscreen wiper for a road car, you haven't got enough people left to win the Formula One World Championship. And do you know why? Formula One cars are designed by men, and men cannot do two things at once. <laughs> no, that's a good point. We can't. Am I right? Yes, exactly. No, well, we'll admit that. We cannot multitask. Please. I mean, no, don't ask me now. I'm putting this pen away. <laughs> yeah, Master, now you can talk. Hold on. <laughs> oh, can you talk now? Breathe in. Hold. I'm breathing out again. We can't do two. <laughs> oh. It's breathing in and then breathing out. It's enough for us to be occupied. Absolutely. Yeah. Excitement of when we first learned to drive, when we were 17. Yeah. And, you know, the driving test and passing it. Well, not passing it in your case, because what was it you did? Yeah. What do you do in a driving test if you don't pass it? Yes. You... All right. You... I failed. You failed. Right. I failed. I failed. failed. First time. Failed. Yes, I did. Failure. Yes, I failed. Why did you fail? Well, because uh, a traffic light went red as I was coming up to it, and the examiner said, proceed as you normally would, so I gave it a bootful. <laughs> <laughs> failed. Presumably, you passed first time? No. Really? I failed. No. Yeah. You failed. What, you yeah. got lost? We were going along. And all of a sudden, he hit the dashboard with his clipboard and he said, Look out, there's a small child in the road. And I said, No, there isn't. And kept going. <laughs> because there wasn't. So you were just being pedantic? No, he I was, was being correct. He was anticipating an emergency stop, not an argument, you fool. Was he? <laughs> yeah, that's what was going on. Uh, news of a new Skoda. Uh, here it is. It's a version of the Fabia. They wow. called it the Scout. So presumably it comes with 10p piece, a bit of string in the glove box, and pitches up on your doorstep once a year to ask for a pound to clean itself. <laughs> so I suppose every summer it goes off and sort of stays in the countryside somewhere and is touched inappropriately. <laughs> No, James. No, no, James. That's the Skoda Catholic Church. Now, we've gone off topic again, haven't we? Quite badly, yes. On Tuesday, or it might have been Monday, the government announced what it called a level two heatwave alert, OK? For what we used to call a lovely summer's day. <laughs> Actually, we quite like a good heatwave here on Top Gear because it means we can play car sauna. It's really very simple. You park the car with the engine running, you turn the air conditioning off, wind all the windows up, turn the heater to maximum, and the first person to get out is the loser. <laughs> yeah. You think he's making that up, don't you? Because earlier today, while we were waiting for all you lot to turn up, this is what we got up to. It's now 37.8 degrees in here, as you can see. That's before the test begins. Let's just make it fair, OK? Whichever one gets out first, pays the other a tenner. Coming up to four minutes. Temperature check, please. Oh, it's yes. 53 degrees oh, in our oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What percentage of us is water? 98%. Well, oh, so water, water does then evaporate. So what we're breathing is each other. <laughs> ah, ah. You're breathing my chest. Ah. 61.9 degrees. <laughs> Guys. Oh, come on. <laughs> you owe us ten pounds each. Yes, that. Gordon, if you're watching, and you're probably not, if you're going to set these ridiculous uh, heat wave level alerts, what was it we got up to? 62. 62 degrees is your bottom. Yeah, it gets uh, a bit toasty about. Yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah, uncomfy. Yeah. yeah. About that. Actually, that, Gordon, there's something else that I discovered in that test, if you're watching, and that is, I know 
when I'm too hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need the government to tell me to have a drink of water and put sun cream on. Leave us alone. <laughs> Anyway, guys, you'll have to split it. I've only got a 20. And don't worry, I'll put it on expenses. <laughs> uh, right, now, news from India. Uh, there, there's a company over there, the car company Tata. They've got a large car division. Got a new car out. Here it is. It's the Jaguar XJ. <laughs> it's quite striking to look at. The interior is gorgeous as well. It looks fabulous. Look at that. It's going to cost from 50 to 90,000 pounds depending upon the model. Um, there's a direct injection V8, two new diesels yeah. with 271 and I think 270. 237, 271. Yeah. Come on, nobody horsepower. gives a pig's ass about all that diesel stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a new XJ. The important question is, is it a proper Jag? Now, what you mean is, is this car slightly caddish? Mm. That's what you actually mean. Yes. Is the person who drives it a bit? Oh, what's the word? I'm not quite sure how to sum it up, but the sort of person who would go away for a weekend with his wife to a hotel, some romantic place, and spend the entire night flirting outrageously with a waitress, and it's OK because he's got a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's and a then... jack drive. You can get away with anything. I'm terribly sorry. I ran over your dog. Oh, in my jack. <laughs> <laughs> Is it fair to say, do you think, that no Jag driver is ever entirely trustworthy, but it's in a really nice, likeable way? Well, because if you went to a prison, forget the sort of stabbists and, the, you know, the strangers. The ones who are in there for a bit of tax dodging, yeah. I bet 80% have got Jags. You know what I mean, don't you? Have you got a Jag? Who here's got a Jag? You've got a Jag? Look at him. Yeah, he's a Jag driver. He goes away with a sort of girl for the weekend and then goes, Awfully sorry. Bit of an issue Would with the you wallet. mind awfully settling this <laughs> while I go and warm up the jag? You know what I mean. <laughs> the thing is, I think that is just a brilliant, brilliant piece of design because it's a jag, it but is it's a kind jag. of modern. That's absolutely fantastic looking yeah. car. I can't wait to have a go in it. to China. OK, well, the thing is, when you're there, you're often tempted to buy one of those fake watches. You yes, know. that you see on the street every yeah. time, because you just think, oh, yeah, that'll get everybody fooled. Oh, it stops. No, <laughs> it the thing is, right, there's a Chinese company now called Geely, and they have launched a fake Rolls Royce. Oh, give over. Got a picture of it here. <laughs> If there is ever any budget cuts on The Apprentice, Alan Sugar could turn up in that. Nobody would be any the wiser. Nobody didn't know. Look at it, it's identical. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like they just said, what does a Rolls Royce look like? Down the phone. And then they just do it. Big. Mind you, you think the overall shape is bad. You know the flying lady on the front, OK? Uh -huh. We've got a picture here of the one that's actually on Alan Sugar's car. There it is. Yep. Would you like to see the one on the front of the Geely fake? Yeah. Here it is. Oh, God! <laughs> they just made that out of a bit of foil in the top of a cigarette packet and twisted it into shape. She's got no head. It's terrible. <laughs> and now the news. And the big news this week, uh, the government wants to put up signs on the motorway telling drivers to pull over at the next junction, get out and swap their car for public transport. Which is kind of puzzling, because why would you, when you're in a car already, want to stop and then get on the train? I don't... It's like going to the cinema and then putting a, a sign on the screen saying, have you thought about reading a book? Yes, it's too late. You've made up your mind. I'm in the cinema. What are the signs going to say? Don't need to be on time or anywhere near where you actually want to go. The railway station is next left. <laughs> <laughs> Something missing from your daily commute? Yes, a foul smell from a stranger sitting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> what are going to tempt us to do that? I tell you what, you know um, the government announced earlier this week that 60,000 people are going to be laid waste by swine flu. So what they ought to be telling us is under no circumstances use public transport. Well, that's yes, just you're right. Point. Funny thing is, OK, swine flu is getting a bad press. 
Well, have you noticed that? I mean, yeah. no, it is. They say, oh, it's bad for the economy because no one will buy anything and uh, there'll be a lot of absenteeism. Yeah. But look at it this way parking spaces for the rest of us will be easier to find. <laughs> That's a good point. Hey, what? My bull mastiff keeps trying to mate with my Labradoodle. No, bear with me, I do get back to cars. It keeps trying to mate with my Labradoodle, and I think I've worked out what the results of that coupling would look like. Here it is. <gasps> ah! Is that a motorcycle and sidecar? Sort of melted into one hideous lump. Yeah, it's a Laverda 3CL. The man behind this is a French medical technician. Did he not at any point whilst building it? Just take one step back. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's horrible! If you know of anything uglier than that, you should write to us at, um... I live next door to David Guest. <laughs> Talking. <laughs> I was driving down here this morning and I couldn't help noticing that my Mercedes just said on the dashboard, your service is due in 26 days. And I just thought, how Germanic and boring is that? It's very precise. I know, and then I was thinking, what's going to happen on the 27th day when inevitably I still haven't had it serviced? Cooler. Three weeks. <laughs> I think. It's funny you should say this, actually, because uh, my little Fiat's overdue for a service. And I was driving along the other day, and all of a sudden, this little picture of a spanner appeared on the dashboard. Well, that's what it's calling you. Yeah, it would. <laughs> you are a spanner. Oh, is that what it yeah. is? Yeah. So if I continue to ignore it, like I am doing, what turns into a picture of the end of a bell or, or what? <laughs> a map of Tasmania. Big picture of a male chicken. <laughs> <laughs> now, last week, a piano was accidentally dropped on a Morris Marina as we were filming it. Yeah, now, last time this happened, the Morris Marina Owners Club uh, which is like the provisional wing of the Morris Men, were <laughs> absolutely furious. They went yeah, they were. Actually, yeah. there's, uh, there's been a lot of internet activity on the Morris chat room. I'm going to send an email to the BBC, and I don't care if they don't read it. <laughs> now, that's what they said last time, OK? This time, getting worse. They said they're going to get physical. <laughs> I'm quoting now. One of them says, and I'm not making this up, if I see Jeremy Clarkson in the street, I will poo into my hand and throw it at him. <laughs> well, they'll poo into their own yes. hands. That's a stupid way of getting someone. It's like an assassin lining up on the target and shooting them through his own head. <laughs> <laughs> it's revolting. Can I just point out that before we do move on, if you do decide to put yourself on your parents' insurance and you have a crash and the insurance company find out that it was really your car... Which they will if it's got a body kit on it. Or even half a body kit. Yeah. All right, <laughs> whatever. The point is, if the insurance company find out that it really was your car after all, they won't pay out. And then they can prosecute you and then you might have to go to jail and then one day you'll be in the showers and a big strange man will come. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, the point is, get yourself a beige Volvo because no loss adjuster will imagine that's yours. Yeah. Uh, I just want to mention this, OK? Land Rover has launched a mobile phone, which they say is as tough as their vehicles. OK, I've got a picture of it here. There you go. Now, what I want to know is, why is it all covered in diarrhoea? Because... <laughs> That Maybe. is unquestionably excrement. Maybe what they're trying to say is it's tough enough to survive a trip through your digestive system <laughs> and, and still be... Oh, my God! Look whose digestive system. Sir Ranulph wow. Fiennes. Can we get this up on here? It's actually Ranulph Fiennes's diarrhoea. It's been through him. What he's actually saying as he holds it up there is, I was all bunged up until the phone came out, and that was it. I opened the floodgates. <laughs> You can see Look he's just it. come back from Nepal. He's in a lake of poo. Oh, that explains his pained expression. Look at that. Oh, do you think that, do you think he passed the Land Rover as well? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> giddy aunt, he did. He ate his Land Rover. Now the thing is, okay, last week when we were making the film, you probably saw, okay, out in France, there was some doubt as to who actually owned the car that you ended up driving. Was it the wife of the president? of the Morris Marina Owners Club, or was it the wife of the President of France, who of course is Carla Bruni? Well, that was cleared up this week because Carla Bruni went to uh, Nelson Mandela's birthday party in New York, where she sang a song which clears everything up. Now we know. Your 
Westwood. Now, actually, I want to, uh, while we're on the subject of this, last week James did talk about touching people inappropriately, OK? Uh, and the Daily Star, in an editorial, says that we've upset the Scouts and the Catholic Church, and they say that we can add those two august organisations to other people we've offended, including lorry drivers, Scots, Malaysians, <laughs> Germans, blind people, anti-hunt protesters and smokers. And I'm sorry, but this... This sort of gutter press claptrap gets just so far up my nose. How dare they? How dare they suggest that we would be rude to smokers? <laughs> that is the end of the news.